Hello televiewers, uh, good evening and welcome to Prime R on my Media Prime. We are this day going to be looking at uh, the black race, the black man, asking the question as to why we as uh, a race, a continent and a people are not uh, wealthy compared with uh, people of uh, other continents and uh, races. We also are going to be looking at uh, the announced uh, strike action threat by lecturers of state universities over on paid uh, research allowances. Uh, good evening once again. We are going to be discussing on these two topics with our panelists who are already in the house. Uh, Dr. Nick Nguanyam is a social entrepreneur and uh, educationist uh, par excellence and a politician. Good evening and welcome, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Liu. Uh, very exciting topics tonight. Uh, good evening to our listeners. Uh, we hope that we'll be able to help ourselves as we go through these topics. Since we are talking about uh, the black man, the Pan-Africanist is in the house. Uh, Andrin Atemibako is here with us. Uh, we're glad to have you, Andrin. Thank you very much, Mr. Kum Leonard, and thank you to the panelists that are on the seat this evening, and Happy New Year to all the viewers. Thank you very much. <coughs> we are also in the company of the, a representative of the CPDM party in uh, Mr. Uh, this evening. They are the ones uh, making policies in Cameroon. Uh, in the government. We are glad to have you also with us this evening, uh, Robert Malamfekedia. Thank you for inviting me, Mr. Kum uh, Leonard, and uh, greetings to my co-panelists and to all our beautiful viewers out there. We are uh, this day going to start uh, with you, um, Dr. Nick Nguanyam. Um, why are blacks not worthy? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm happy that this topic cuts across. When we are talking about blacks today, it's not about CPM, SDF, MRT, and all those kind of things. We'll talk about general principles, and then probably we could see how those things affect us. Mm. Blacks are not worth, wealthy. Oh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me change the words. When you say wealthy, some people might not understand. Let's just put it in the way it's supposed to be. Why are blacks not rich? Mm -hmm. Why are blacks not rich? You know? That is the question. Mm -hmm. Why are blacks not rich? Mm -hmm. Because blacks are poor in Cameroon, they are poor in Ghana, they are poor in, in, in Zimbabwe, they are poor all over. When you go to South Africa, the, the, the whites are rich, the blacks are poor. You go to America, the, 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 everybody is rich, the blacks are poor. What is it you about? You go to Haiti. You go to Haiti, they are mm -hmm. poor. So what is it about the black man that makes him poor? We are not saying that some white people are not poor, that some you know, white people are poor, but on a whole, one on one black, there are more black, you know, if you, if, you, if you take the survey, there are more black people who are poor than white people who are poor. Um, so there is, a, there is an issue there, and it's very, very easy to understand why it's happening so. It has to do with principles you know that's one we have never understood life operates on principles if you operate on principles you make it uh, um, life doesn't care or nature doesn't care about color L nature responds to principles if you sow you will reap if you don't sow you will not reap it's as simple as that and uh, when when we'll be talking and going going into deeper into this topic we would we would try to examine some lessons from the four books that have always we've always talked about those four books have got the answers to all our problems and you know that book that famous book written by Robert Kiyosaki why A students work for C students and B students work for the government. If you can understand what he is saying in that book, you will never be poor. He's actually the author of the other book, uh, Rich That Poor That Is. He, it's about the same principles that he has stated differently in this other book. If you can understand that and apply it, you know wealth would come to you whether you are black, yellow, or green. The, prom the problem is blacks don't apply the principles that are necessary for creating wealth and we spend all our time blaming everybody except ourselves okay um the pan-africanist uh, who is in the house with us andrew Nita, uh, at temi baku uh we poor because of uh, the ploy of the west mr leo that uh, that this topic is it has other factors to put into consideration mm -hmm. because it's also true that there are some blacks that are extremely rich mm -hmm. but the I want to believe that the subject is the majority of blacks mm -hmm. are poor we are not saying that poverty 
all blacks are poor but mm -hmm. we are looking at the majority rate the percentage and that is what is quite alarming for us to understand why it is this way you go you have to look into the aspect of uh, now let's look at it in the context of the african continent you come down to education the quality of education they get you come to institutions policies that affects the the the, the, the common people now you you look like uh, for example in in africa a lot of people are unemployed that aspect whereby people are not giving the opportunity to have access to 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 create their own their own destiny and to create their own life where you have mass population that are living in abject poverty because they don't have employment so that becomes a challenge and that has to do with the policy which are put in place in that country or in that co in this continent whereby the people do not have access to jobs and even when they have the, they have jobs the wages are too small so that where it comes down to skills and the quality of education which can enable a Cameroonian to have a high wage pay whereby it can compete with what uh, someone is earning in the United States or in Europe. So the, the quality of education we get, we don't get enough education. We, the, 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 we, we don't get enough job. That means that the, the, the private, the, the led private sector in our country, for example, in Cameroon, is quite challenging, whereby the, everything is the government. The government becomes the largest employer. So it, it, it changes the, the, the balance of how many Cameroonians are going to get rich within a, 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 ten, a 10 years to come, 20 years to come. But in a fast developing society whereby the, the, the private sector is a booming sector, the private sector is a sector where everything is happening. The economy is turning in the hands of the private sector like we can see in Asia, in Europe, and in other parts of the world. But you, you come to Africa, it, it's almost everything is being centralized, whereby the governments in, in each of these member states in Africa are always the largest employer. So it makes that very difficult, Mr. Liu. Coming again now to our tax policies, that prevents a lot of Africans to become rich because... You look at the policies, like I see you use the word, the policies affects the, 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 the black race. It affects it so drastically because when, 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 you, when you look like, for example, you look like the West, it's easy for you put a black man. Yeah, and you we, are going to, we are going to look at uh, the tax and banking policies in the course of the program, but you raised an issue that uh, to get rich you need to work for government in Cameroon and other uh, countries. Can you really get rich working for the government? Well, like I said, the, the, it, it's all about corruption. You, you see, it's, it, it's going to be a challenging issue for us because these are very growing concerns if we are going to develop and if we are going to be successful tomorrow. We need societies whereby we have accountability. Mm -hmm. Now, it is true that when you work with the government, normally your wage, you have, they have their, their, your, your pay wage is determined by, 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 by law, let me put it that way. But you see, it's not the case. A good example would be the former governor of a, a Niger Delta in Nigeria who stole about $250 million uh, dollars that he was doing money, um, money laundry in the, in the United Kingdom, bought houses there, bought houses in South Africa. I mean, an individual. Now you look at where the community of the people who he, he was representing. They don't have light, they don't have hygiene, they don't have access to water, but that is what one man was able to steal from the government. Now you realize that it makes it very difficult for people in that community to become successful because one man is stealing all the opportunities which others could have gotten to increase and to better their life. Mm. So uh, going with the government does not mean you are going to get rich, but the, in, in the, the aspect of the corruption, corruption is one of the main things that hinders us from progress. When you go into the government, you now use that opportunity, like I said before, to create more other opportunities to extort money from people. Okay. And because that background check is, is not done on the individual, whereby the government is able to check his financial dealings and make sure that he is not stealing money. But you realize that if this individual stole, for example, $250 million, where did he get the money from? That becomes a question. That means that he, he makes his own people go poorer 
why he gets richer. So okay. That becomes a huge challenge where an African, one man, can make 500 Africans grow poor in less than one year. Okay. Uh, Robert Malanfe, to, can we understand from your perspective why uh, seemingly we, we grow poorer by uh, the year, by the decades? Uh, I have my own uh, conceptions about this, which may be uh, different from uh, my co-panelists. Uh, the first aspect why blacks are poorer than the rest is that uh, blacks, we have this problem of over-dependency. We depend a lot with the, on the West. That is my own first uh, conception. He will talk about education. You realize that when the white man came here before independent, they make us to believe that we should not focus on technical education a lot, but on uh, a general education. They build another conception on, on our mindset. We realize that civilization started in Africa. From Africa, I went to East, uh, Eastern Europe with the Greek civilization and the rest. From there, it developed with, uh, that's with regards to agrarian uh, 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 civilization. It developed, I went now to Industrial Revolution, where okay. Europe and America the, came up, and now you realize that uh, now you are at the level of technology, which is Asia, that is almost controlling. Now, Africans that started working hard with civilization, developing their own perspective, they have now become quiet just to depend. We need technology. Japan give us the technology. China give us this technology. America give us this. We have become, Africa has become very, very dependent that they think that everything that they need should come from the West. And the West will not give us because they want to be up and they want us to be down. People keep on thinking about the West, that all solutions should come from the West. And that is where we have a problem. Our leaders, they think about the, the West. There are successful people that will even send them for scholarship to go to Europe go to America to study this technology and bring them back. They go and they suffer from brain transplant where they are given more pace package and they forget their uh, activity of patriotism to come back home. You realize that in China, many of them were sent to go and study in America to study the technology there and bring it back in China. They went, they did it patriotically and came back in China to develop their own uh, uh, technology. Yeah, but but is it, the is one it, is we it, send, they go there, they stay there, realize that we depend on the West. Is it not because uh, their skills and knowledge acquired are better valorized in China? That's what I am explaining that. When they go to America, they study, they bring it back in their country, right? Mm. Why our own, when they study, they, we have the best doctor. Uh, from what I realized, the doctor that uh, gave the uh, COVID-19 injection to, <laughs> to Biden is a Cameroonian. Why can she not come back home? It is true. It is true that when she comes back home, the money they give her in America, she might not have it here back home. But she should think about coming to build back home patriotism. <laughs> they don't have it. They think about they, when they go to the West, they have a good package that they forget back about home. They depend a lot about the West. The second aspect. If you were also, given, if, if you were given her pay package, would you come back? That's why I'm talking about patriotism. No, yes, for love of nation. You, would, okay, for love of back? nation. Yes. <laughs> if I was not thinking about love of nation, where many people think that maybe I come, I talk. No, I could have gone, been in Europe by now. I have my brother in England. I have my sister in Paris. They are there. I'm from a family of ten. All of them, they are abroad. So people should not people should not think like people means, should, means, I am talking about myself. I, 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 I am talking about myself now. I will not want to judge them, but I will come back. So that is the first aspect. We should know that we depend on the West. Okay. Our leaders, everybody they depend on the West. The second aspect too that I will bring is the aspect that us Africans we don't have dignity and respect for the black race. We don't have respect for our own race. If an American is touching Africa, all of America get up. Even, even though they back home, they do terrible things. They kill themselves. But if it is out of their continent, they stand up. If one European is touching Africa, the whole of Europe get mad. They have respect for their race. We don't have respect for our race. We don't think about the society. We think about personal. Uh, 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 um, we think about personal achievement. We don't have respect for our race. When us Africa will start to have respect for this black race, that is when the West will respect it. But if us Africa we don't respect our black race, no matter what we do, the West will not respect it. And that is why they will never come to Africa to have a 50-50 trade with us. 
us Africans. Because when they come, they already see us that we don't have respect for it. They come to know that they are going to a minority. Okay. We don't have respect. Okay, um, and lastly, which which is the most importantly, which when I say, please, I want uh, my viewer, uh, viewers not to misunderstand what I'm about to say now, because they should look at it in a good perspective and not the general view. The next aspect is what the West brought here, Christianity and religion. The concept of Christianity and God really, really has been diverted. People don't work hard, they go to church to sleep, praying to God, that God should give them everything. People that are supposed to take money to create companies, they spend billions to build churches, but they don't build industry. You see a child of seven years, eight years, is already shouting, Father, Father, my Lord, my Lord. But you go to, to, to China, you see children of that age, they're already there playing with, labo, uh, uh, playing with uh, uh, technological uh, issues. They can produce phones already. You go to America, you see them at the age of 10, they're already in the laboratory, but us, we are not here. So the cost step of Christianity should not be misquoted on Africans where we sit quiet, we don't work hard, and we depend only on God. That God time is the best. God will give this, this please. God is not only for Africans, but for the world. So those are okay. the three aspects that for me, my own personal view, I think that it is really the cause why Africans or the black race is poor. Yeah, um, one, one, one of the factors advanced, uh, Dr. Nick, has to do with uh, the fact that uh, we are uh, predominantly a consumer uh, people. Yes. Um, before I delve into that, we are not a consumer people because we have we have chosen to. It's it's it's, it's because we failed to do something mm -hmm. that puts us in that position. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are we are consumers because we failed to be productive. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Now, um, if when you listen to to many people talk on these subjects, especially if you were, if you were paying attention when Mr. Um, Ibako. Ibako was talking. You see, in developing his team, he was, he was, he was focused on jobs and, and how governments are not doing mm. this, the salaries and so on. You see, uh, there is something that I want to explain now before we get lost. Mm. We have to understand that there are five ways of creating wealth. Okay. And when Oba uh, uh, Mr. Bako was speaking, you can see that he is, uh, his mindset is fixed to one way of creating wealth. The government. Yes. N no, not the government. To be employed. Mm -hmm. you, you see, his mind, is, well, his mind is focused on being employed. By the government? Well, say by the government or the private sector. Okay. But to be an employee. That is, you go around with your CV and application somewhere that someone should employ you. You, you, you see? But this is what I have to say about employment. Even before I t talk about employment, let me give those four areas of how wealth can be created. So we, when we understand the boxes, we will know how to, 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 to get Africa rich. Mm. If we stay in the box of employment, Africa will never be rich for the next decades or whatever. Nothing will change. We need to move out of that box to some other boxes. That is where the riches are created. So four ways of, cre of, 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 uh, of, of creating wealth legitimately. Then there's a fifth one, which is not legitimate. That is you just steal or you, 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 embezzle. you, you embezzle from the government coffers and become very rich, the richest minister, the richest director or whatever, but you stole the money, you see, you didn't work. So just stealing money and being rich is not, a, is, is not an, an honorable way of being rich. So let's, let's listen and uh, what are the four ways of, you know, creating wealth number one like Ebako said to be, you are an employee you can be employed in one of two sectors you, an employee means you work for somebody and at the end of the month or the week or ha whatever the time the time the time frame agreed at they you know they pay you something at the end of let's say if you're in the uk i think they pay every week or every two weeks or something like that but in cameroon here we pay at the end of every month so you would say that at the end of the month you go and then you get your salary either from the bank or whatever but the important thing is that the few pennies you are given at the end of the month and when 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 you don't work you have nothing when you work you have something mm -hmm. and then the, the thing about it is very difficult to, to 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 pay your to pay your bills and still have something at the end of the month even if you are saving you cannot save more than one month one month uh, salary. salary therefore it is said that when you are an employee you are always one check away from poverty an employee is always one check away from poverty 
And with that salary, you have to look after your family, you have to build your house, you have to run your car, you have to, you have to. And when that money is not enough, that's why corruption, you know, corruption becomes an, an in thing. Because people have to look for ways of, 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 of earning money, not legitimately, but around where they are tied. Like they say, go the chop for the play, the tie. You, mm -hmm. you, you understand that, that phrase? So... And, 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 the, and the imagination is very limited. So someone is coming from a service, then you have, to, you have to squeeze them, you know, hold them on their testicles and then get some money or swindle them or something. You know, doctors committing abortions, all those kind of little things to just, just to make ends meet. So that is being an employee. And you might think that uh, if you are the greatest employee, let's say like, or like President Obama was president, he's the president of America, the greatest nation, the president of the world, so to speak, he will be the richest. No. Ob yes, Obama was just an employee of the state. And I think his salary was four was 400 and something thousand a, a year, I can't remember. And you see Donald Trump just took a, um, a dollar or something like that of that money. So, it's, it's, so you, can, you can never, you can never be rich. As an employee, it's, 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 it's just a principle. You can never, never, never be rich as an employee. M for entry. But if you are an employee and you are doing something else genuinely, using one of the other mechanisms, you can be rich. But if you think that you are going to be an employee and be rich, it's a lie. And that's why you see a lot of Cameroonians, they go like to America or wherever, and they are doing these jobs, $10 per, job, per, per hour job or $15, it doesn't matter what. If they want to get more money, they put in more time. They beat themselves and beat themselves and beat them. It doesn't matter how much you beat yourself. You would only get just, just about this much. And then when you are sitting here in Cameroon and hear the amount of money they earn, it looks like it's so much because it's competitive. You are looking at, oh, they're earning 2 million francs a month. Oh, that's a lot of money. It's because you are comparing to what you're earning here. But you are not aware of the bills they have to pay and the standard of living out there and so on. You are not aware of all those other things. So we said employed to be an employee employment or or to be an employee that's one way the other one is to be the second one is to be self-employed self-employed is already better than being an employee self-employed is somebody who has gone to school has some some particular skills and sets up a business in the area of those skills a medical doctor for instance who owns a clinic uh, a lawyer who owns a law firm um, a, a carpenter who sets up a carpentry or something like that okay you you are, you are the boss you, you 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 do your own thing and then the, the the interesting thing is you would earn more money than an employee but the thing about it is that the way money is generated in that system is like um it's like you know this machine, this machine that we use for grinding, oh, grinding corn, mm -hmm. the hand, yeah. or the um, ones that they use yeah. for grinding a, go a goosey in the market mm -hmm. or something like that. So you see, look at that woman who's grinding a goosey. She has to turn that wheel. As long as she's turning the wheel, the goosey is coming out or the corn is coming out. If she's tired and stops, the system stops. That is, that's what happens under those systems. When you are self-employed, as long as you are strong enough and you are working, the, 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 the milling machine keeps going and the, and the dollars are coming out or the CFA are coming out. If you are sick or you go on holiday, the system comes to a stop. It is you put in your time and your, and your, and your, and your savoir faire and it gives you money. When you stop for one reason or the other, the machine stops. Then the, the, the third one is to be a businessman where you put in place a, a money-making machine. You create a money-making machine. You create, um, you create a system that generates wealth. Okay, and you employ other people and put it there, and you put a mechanism. When they, whether you are sleeping, the mechanism is turning. Whether you're on holiday, it's turning. Whatever you are doing is turning. You employ maybe 50 people, 100 people, or 200 people, or whatever the, the size of the business. So that's one of the best places to be. If you can create a system that makes money for you when you are away, that's that's where everybody should be aiming at. And then the highest level of highest and legitimate way of creating money is to be an investor and great investors are be citing people like Dangote, uh, um, Alaji Baba and many of these other people who are creating you know big industrial complexes that generate wealth create jobs and so on so if you know these things then you know where to fit so now when you take a country like Cameroon and many of these poor African countries we are I don't know who deceived us that we are, it's the white collar job that is the thing so we are all rushing to be in that box of, of, of employees. You, you, if, if you like, you are secretary general, you are minister, you are director, you are in that box. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we kill each other to be in that box. Yet there's so much opportunity out here that we are not aware of. That is the darkness that the white man gave us. And then 
just like the two of them said, it is the education that is very, very, very. Watch my little, our education in Cameroon, Africa come, is we, very we, bad. We are going yes. to come to that. Now, uh, is 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 it also uh, the fact that, um, like he said, Africans uh, think that everything, their, their 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 salvation can only come from the West. We believe so much in the West that uh, the little uh, capital or resource that we have, we bank with uh, the West out there. <clears throat> well, for some time, I think that has been the mentality of most Africans, but I think that is changing mm -hmm. as, the years are, as the, the years are progressing because uh, we have seen a lot of Africans who were able to return back home and decided to stay back in their country. And we have also seen some of Africans who have also decided not to travel out because they've seen much more opportunities in their, in their, in their own uh, countries as well. You see, but the, but the aspect, like I said, it's a very vast and broad topic, you know, Mr. Liu. There are, there are jobs, when we talk, we talk about quality jobs that have a very high wage pay. Even if you are an employee, for example, I have, I, I, I think for, I think I have been an employee, I've been employed for, I think way back, the last time I ever worked for somebody was I think 2000, 2001. For ever since 2001 up to where we are, I've been self-employed. So I had the opportunity to be able to have the experience, the experiences on the two sides as well. Even if you are an employee, there are opportunities whereby in the job market you can look in the job market and look at the jobs that are that can be able to pay you high because you see you start from one level if you are going to another level there's nobody who who stands without serving another person so there's somewhere you have to start first so that is a starting point that i'm saying that a lot of africans have been deprived of having that opportunity where there's a job market that opportunity in in the west if you don't want to work it's because you don't want to work but the opportunity is over for everybody on the aspect whereby even those who don't work get something from the state. But with us here, it's different. We don't get nothing from the state. Job opportunities are very tiny, whereby it's almost like a lottery. If you have to get a job in certain se sectors, there are some rituals and there are some procedures which you have to follow. And that's the position where we are. And that's why I say it's, it's quite difficult. Now, if you look like the, the uh, employee must not only be somebody, I mean, being employed by somebody, uh, even the footballers, they are being employed by the, by the club, that, but you look at their pay, which is high. And from that money, a lot of people who use that opportunity and, began, and begin to invest it in other sectors of businesses, whereby they begin to increase their, 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 their profit margin. So what I was saying, Mr. Leo, is that, if we are going to deal with this issue, there are factors that we must not uh, forget. We need to have very good health quality system mm -hmm. because that alone helps to, to, to give a balance because you cannot, whatever we are talking here of poverty or riches, if you are not in good health, you can attain all these things. And we have a challenge on our health systems whereby we have a lot of human resources that we lose because we don't have good health systems. So that prevents us again also from excelling, from, from progressing. Mm -hmm. A good example, for example, somebody will be sick, a minister will be sick, he prefers, or a, a president will be sick, he prefers to fly out of the country, go get treatment out there, and then come back. The question here is, is he the only one with that kind of sickness, or is it only there that that sickness can be treated? Can he not bring that same technology to his own countrymen so that when other local people are also sick, they too can go to that same reference hospital which you have been going to? But you take you go you take your your your, your money because you have the means and you fly out, and then you leave the, your your own common people in a very bad health system. So that also prevents. The, 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 the percentage, if we look at uh, the census of 215, we almost had about 460 million Africans who were poor. And by 2020, looking at the population of Africa, it means we're almost reaching half of that margin. So it is getting worse. It means that if we are not able to create more jobs, let me put it that way, that can give a good wage 
to the to the employees where they can earn something and make something out of what they earn not only depending on their salary it's it's it's, it's, it's in, in europe is different because at a certain level they have put in a tariff in all the eu system all the eu system where you can earn more than that i faced that same problem before the euro came before we, we we had the euro i remember by then i was in holland we were using gilders and when i was there in the transition of the euro and i saw the effect of the euro because i was self-employed so what happened then was that when you move to this country and come to this country in doing what i was doing before for example in holland and i came and i was doing the same thing in belgium the system had changed they put you on a fixed tariff if you are doing stash, because when you move from one country to another, they tell you, a company tells you, you have to do stash, but also you follow our own system. Now, they have a fixed rate at that period. And when you have now, you've now finished your stash, for example, you have another fixed rate. So that sets a man who has an ambition, it gives you a limitation, even though the salary may be good, because it can take care of a bit, and you still have extra to stay because it's a professional job. So what I'm just simply trying to say here is getting jobs that have good pay wage. That gives the opportunity to the employees to use that as a springboard to use. And it's just like you get into the government. They give you facility to take loans. They give you facility to, 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 to be able to build a house and all of that. You have some kind of advantages. But this is what I'm saying is that, that those all of that was supposed to be in the private sector. The government of each nation in Africa was supposed to help its citizens to develop. In the West, if you want to start up a company, they give you an amount of loan. It's default automatically. You get about 15,000 euro for a one-man company where you can employ five people. That is already a good kickoff for any person that who, because they know when they give you this money, you're going to pay back your tax and you'll pay back the loan. And that increased the, 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 the private sector. Now let us come in, let's come now back to the aspect of our government and our policies, Mr. Liu. Now, at the level of the IMF as well, it makes it difficult for a lot of Africans to develop. At the level of the UN National Security Council, it makes it also difficult for the Africans to, 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 to develop. Go in the, in the West, you talk about incarcerations. You go into our penitentiaries for, for very little crimes, they give you very long jail sentence. I don't know, I've, I've taught many of those places and I've seen you have a racial discrimination, inequality, the gap between the rich and the poor, all of that plays if you want development. So if we are going to come out of this cage, there are things that we must understand that accountability is very important and background checks on the people that we are putting in place to make decisions for us is very vital because a man enters into power and instead of him coming to bless the people with the resources of the nation, what he comes, he amasses it all to himself. And what he takes from the people is the people's destiny. So you cannot expect the people to develop when one man is stealing almost state budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if you get the point. So it, it's difficult. So I will not really put the blame all on the West. I will put the blame on us. You look, come to our local businesses where you employ people. I, I, Mr. Leo, I'll give you an example. When I have people working for me, I make sure I feed you every day. I make sure I take care of your transportation. Your salary doesn't get into all of that, only because I want you to have that room to be able to make the money you earn from me to do something with it. But if I put all of that transportation, your feeding and everything, it means I'm only exploiting you. So you're coming back to our own, how we treat ourselves. You, you see what I'm trying to say? It makes it difficult for somebody working with you and then the person is able to grow. So that room of growth, we must, it, it, it has to do with the quality pay which that the people get. And that also has to do with education. We need to invest a lot in education because a lot of people want skills. A lot of people want people who, want, who can put, put in input mm. whereby okay. it can develop, it can develop whatever structure you are mm. serving. Okay. It's very important. Um, Robert, is like he's saying, is it not also uh, because we have very weak, uh, very very weak uh, private sector, not only Cameroon but in other African uh, nations? Oh, for sure, uh, it's absolutely true because uh, the mentality we have is that uh, everybody wants to go to the government because uh, they believe the government is a sure source of income only, and uh, the private sector now is left weak, especially in Africa where uh, you need to work a lot a lot like for instance if you are a teacher uh, a government teacher from ENS you maybe go to school just uh, two days per week 
and you have your hundreds of thousands waiting for you, why those in the private sector, teachers in the private sector every day, like for instance, a primary school teacher, you go in the morning, you come back at, at 2 o'clock, and you manage to earn your 50,000 per day. So you realize that the private uh, sector actually is weak. That teacher still, that teacher that goes in the morning and come back at 2 o'clock and earn about 50,000 per month, does not have collateral security to, low, uh, to borrow money or get whatever uh, the teacher can have to invest. It becomes a problem. But the one in the government sector, government teacher earning 200 and something, will easily have maybe a collateral security as a government worker or whatsoever to be able to borrow money. So you realize that in just this example, you see the difference between the two. You realize that those in the government have advantage and those in the private sector really has no advantage and it makes the system weak. Uh, I've listened uh, from... No, uh, no, but, but, but is, the, is the private sector not made, uh, rendered weak by the government itself? Why can the government not empower the private sector? Because you are giving very uh, great examples of persons working for the private sector, especially in the domain of, the, of teachers. Why can the government not set a policy that actually uh, comes up with a law imputing on all pri uh, private, school, private schools to be able to pay their teachers this amount? Yes, actually, that's the problem we face uh, uh, in most African countries, especially those in the private sector that are struggling. That is a problem that almost all African countries actually they face. And actually, if these laws are being put in place, like we have countries like Nigeria, where you go as a Nigerian, where you import, you pay about 25% of your, uh, of your uh, dues. In places like uh, Cotonou, we have less than maybe 10 percent which they pay for those that are citizens so they have advantages yes most countries they try to put their own um they try to put their own policies to ensure that uh, the private sector actually uh, grows up but uh really as a youth less uh, in my late 20s i have a different perspective about all this you heard uh, dr nick talking yeah he spoke very well gave good points much more of a motivation speaker which us the youth we are going after we hear them very well that you are either employed or you are self-employed or you invest very good you meet uh, my code panelist here mr bako he will tell you that yeah the government need to put good policy this this which is also good but uh, somebody in 19 to 29 years is thinking about something else because that person right now does not even have the money. Assuming you come from DOP or you come from Bansal, you studied in the university, you've graduated. You think about going home when back home in the village, they know you've studied, you have a master's degree, you need to bring a lot back to them. They have another perspective of you. What do you do? Do you go back home? You stay in the city. Now you stay in the city there. Investing is the best thing. You see the billionaires we have, they sit in the house, they sleep, they have invested their money into something. But you at that level, you don't even have that money to invest. How do you start? Self-employed. Why? Wow, you've gone to school, you study special education, you studied uh, 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 political science, you study, normally we know our educational system. It does not give preference to uh, technology, uh, te technical education that much. You study the grammar education. How do you start from there now to be self-employed? Maybe somebody that in mechanic, yes, you can be self-employed, you have the technical know-how in you already. But someone that go to school, most of us that will come from university, we face this problem. How do we get to the fear of self-employed? Like, for instance, somebody like me, I did political science, and I'm out now. How do I get, how do I get into self-employed with my knowledge in political science? Am I to go back to, uh, do maybe if I study economy, I'll know that, okay, I can start a little kiosk for mobile money and start from that era you see that we have that uh, problem mm -hmm. then we come back now at the level of getting employed now you realize that most youth in africa they are frustrated because they don't have that money to invest except those that are born in some, into some families that at least they have something that they can start i'm talking about the poor ones that we have how do you get into the system you are frustrated now to look for a job because you know that you need to raise a capital to go into that investment when you have a job. And now, getting out that job is a problem. You need a job. Uh, in those days, all of you, yeah, maybe you are more than me of age, 
maybe in those days when you finish your school you go back they sell a land and they give you money you come and start your life the lands are not there anymore you have to start alone you need a job to invest where do you get that job you go to the private sector you have a job of uh, eighty thousand. you are in dwala you rent you pay your electricity bill water bill how do you start to generate that money to invest that is what us the youth in africa we have as a major problem you will see motivation speaker they'll talk they are good talk yes we know that but we are now in the scratch like for instance you see somebody zero penny looking for a job how does that person with a zero penny start get a job uh, uh, have money to invest source of capital they will tell you that you get a job you save from jangi or family assistant you are from a family that they won't have money to support you you are from uh, you are very poor you can't go into injangi where you contribute money or you borrow you need a job okay that is where the frustration Nick, of youth are dr nick is a problem or uh, not uh, also fundamentally uh linked to our system of education like you just raised that's right um you see it doesn't matter how, what we say at the end of the day it comes to lack of capacity mm -hmm. and that's what he was that's the picture he was trying to paint you see and then um you know we we are not we are not talking politics today we are just t telling ourselves what works and what doesn't work and if we know what works and go for it we'll get out of it but if we keep trying to give you know raise this excuse or that excuse and beat around in circles it will not work now when it comes to creating a business self employment or whatever watch my lips what you need most the first thing that you need is capacity. It's not money. The first thing that you need is capacity. If you don't have the capacity, it doesn't matter if someone gave you 10 million francs, you will not make it. And if we look in our environment, the Igbos, the Igbos and their children have the capacity. The Bamelikes and their children have the capacity. So it, it is about a mindset, a way of thinking, a way of going around things what you what you sacrifice when you get up earliest thing in the morning what are you doing with your time but if you're going to sit and be watching television and commenting and on whatsapp and so on and not doing something useful because you you study whatever that's your problem what you sow is what you will reap now if you have seen anybody who has ever won millions at the national lottery and made it in life in a business show me they don't exist yet they got the money so why is it that someone would win so much money at the lottery and doesn't make it he has the money he couldn't invest because there was no money now he got the money what happened it, it goes down the drain because he doesn't know how to manage wealth he doesn't know how to make money um, wealth making riches is like it's like granules you have seeds of granules in your mouth in your hand you can sow those seeds or you eat them but you need discipline to sow the seeds and wait but a lot of people will eat the seeds and that is the biggest problem and that comes from our education and we have thousands and thousands of children going to our, our universities studying things that don't help them in any way whatsoever and at the end of the day they turn around they blame everyone else except themselves you know the other day I was talking to a young girl who came visiting me about two three days ago and I asked what are you studying in the University of Boya she said I'm studying gender studies and and, and 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 my spirit just went down and i asked her very gently and uh, how are you going to put bread on your plate how, how, how are you going to work he says she said she was going to work with the united nations and then i asked her um how many people have left from that university and how many are working with the united nations she said no it's a new department that was just created and so on then i didn't want to be i didn't want to push her too much but i was feeling so bad but the question i would like to ask is the stake the stake is in the ministry of higher education this whole staircase was smelling of urine. <laughs> go, go, go around those ministries. See the grass that is growing. But we study very well. Let's continue to study very well. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Dr. Nick. <clears throat> now, um, do you think that there is... <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. Now, uh, is the issue also um, with uh, the policies that are set in place by our respective governments? Yeah, the policies also, it's like I said, it has so many different aspects to look at it. 
and defend do we do we do we think that our leadership in africa is not the, that the patriotic the leadership also has a role to play mm -hmm. equally as the doctor has been uh, citing on in, uh, looking at it from an individual point of view i mean looking at uh, at yourself mm -hmm. as as a, as a citizen mm -hmm. you know which is a very good way to look at it at least that should be the basis if we are going to we are going to stand up as a people you have to what are you doing as an individual mm. before we start talking of what the government is not doing and all of that so but the, the policies also do play a lot mr kum leonard because uh, like i said if we can put in a very good policy system it's going to change a lot of things is is trust you me if you go to societies like Boya right now, you look at the development which is taking place there, even if you were a fool, the development itself will make you wise and will teach you a lot of things. That is how the, a society can influence even when people are backward. A society can quick boost you up. When people travel and go in civilized societies, they do improve within a short period of time, even if they did not go to school. The society itself teaches you a lot of things. And that's where the area of the government comes into place. Into place. The government now becomes that influence that affects the society. So that's why we are saying, for example, if the government in, in the tax policies, Mr. Liu, we are almost at a hundred percent in Cameroon for tax for especially for at the level of the, the poor. If we have a very low tax rate, it's going to boost the pay which in the private sector. People can pay you well because they already are finding a whole lot of difficulties with all kinds of taxes we have in Cameroon. There are just so many taxes in Cameroon. So that plays a lot on the employees. I don't know if you understand me. And the management, because we don't promote the private sector. I know a lot of Cameroonians that are out there that came to Cameroon with very fabulous ideas. I, I think it's of, uh, about a month ago I heard that uh, 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 Razel just won another contract of building these automatic toll gates in Cameroon. Razel has celebrated 70 years in Cameroon and they are still winning contracts. That same contract, I remember when my own junior brother left Turkey and came to Cameroon, met uh, the, 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 the Minister of uh, com uh, uh, Communication, met him in Yaoundé, met Ebako, uh, Ebako Mukete, who has the MTN, and offered this same technology to be built on the toll gates. I, I, I don't know if Ebako still has the contract at the toll gate here going to, to Southwest made that same offer came to the government gave them very good technology on managing income and everything right down to the council level but they rejected it but what he does in the asia he's been employed by governments by heavy banks in building management softwares that manages security system in a nation that's what he's doing in asia but this young man came to his own country to come and put in an input of what he has studied he is other people are exploiting his knowledge out there, but when he came to his own country, they refused because I, I will not, I will not, uh, uh, I will not say that it's jealousy or it's, but that's just our mentality. When it's us, we don't want to promote us, we don't want to push us. But when it's somebody else, and that's how we are. When it's somebody else, you prefer to give it to Razel, who that is a French company, to come and build us automatic uh, tool gates. We have IT engineers in Cameroon that have not even left, that can build those two gates better than Razel. Why are they giving it to Razel? So you come to realize that, Mr. Liu, if the government can bring down tax policies in Cameroon, it will create employment, it will change this country. The amount of Cameroonians, especially those in the, the English-speaking region and the, in the French-speaking region that are importing out and bring into Cameroon. The development, if the government will bring down tax, uh, 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 taxes at the level at the port, Mr. Liu, believe you me, Cameroonians will even ignore that the government is existing. They will build their own society. They will build their own future. So that influence that the government creates an enabling environment mm -hmm. plays a lot in the minds of the common people. Even if you did not go to school, I know uh, uh, one of the uh, few millionaires uh, billionaires that are considered today in Cameroon started off with no form of education. We're all employees. I will not want to call names, but I know them personally. 
They started off like that, but like I said, today if you want to look where they have been to, you ask yourself, is it education? Sometimes, they, Mr. Liu, creating wealth it has some, sometimes it has no protocol. Eh? <laughs> it's just a God-given talent that some people just have it. People like Bill Gates did not go to school. People like Jack Ma of, uh, of uh, uh, China, who is the richest in China, of Ali, uh, Ali Express, Ali Pay, and all of that. These are just people who just have vision the ambitious people who can who believe that this thing can work and they go in and begin to research and be, before you you realize the thing is already working so that's what we are lacking our system of policy in the government makes it very difficult we understand that part of what we are suffering today is the alleged sins of the our forefathers that uh, that has fallen on us today because if you if you are talking on uh, especially like the, the the continent of africa to excel our hands are even tied. Look at if, uh, in a place whereby we, we still pay colonial taxes to France, 500 billion francs every year. Where is that money going to? That money should have been kept here in Africa. It should have been turning in the hands of you and I. I mean, we should have been smiling. But so you realize that all of these things place in such a way that the, the, the policies of the government may not always go in favor to its own citizens. So okay. all of those things do matter. Um... Uh, Temi Baku talked about uh, the fact that uh, blacks highly patronize uh, their brothers and sisters. Is it true? Is that also why uh, we are not uh, making it big? Um, we always uh, prefer to patronize uh, the other over our own. When I said he started here, I said three things. That is the problem of Africa. One, dependency in the West. Mm. Secondly, we don't have respect for our own race. That's what I'm saying. If you give a white man and your own black brother comes, you don't see him as important to give him and you prefer to give a white man, it means you don't have respect for your own race. That's what I earlier said. You will see there are Africans, okay, for instance, I enjoy what Nigeria have done. They decided to block the importation of rice into their country to force people to invest in rice. Are you aware that the highest thing we import in Africa is rice? Food what we can produce back at home mm -hmm. the invest the government to invest in it is still go back to the west policy that they sign with the west like we are talking about education here yeah. one of the uh, french most almost all, all french countries in africa they have those uh, 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 accord with the west that please uh, africa you are very poor go invest in uh, technological education you don't have the money to bring the infrastructure and everything concentrate on general education that is why, Dr. Nick, we are there to do the gender and uh, women agenda, uh, curriculum <laughs> studies, special education, teaching momo. That's what we are forced to do because those laws are there. And when we go now, we do all those things. We come out now, teaching we are frustrated. Mm -hmm. Teaching momo, special education now. <laughs> that, that, it has good names, uh, doctor. It has good names. When you stand somewhere, you say special education. They know you're a big man, special education. But this teaching momo, teaching the blind, that's what they do. So when you go and do all these things, you come back because of those claws of the education. How do you start? So everything goes back to, one, we should not depend on the West and what they tell us. Let us invest in the education that we know that will create employment. Because if, for instance, have some of my guys that I brought them from the village to Douala, they are behind La Cantini here. They studied how to put air condition inside a, 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 a cars. Their whole phones are 400,000. They are fine. But I went to school and I did all the big studies. You come back. How do you go into the system? So you realize that they, that they even did this uh, handwork, uh, carpentry, all these things, they are better off than us because what, he has the money, he's working, but I have the grammar that I can <laughs> say. <laughs> Please, it's not a loving situation. It's terrible. So you realize that those of them that they went into this system of handwork, which uh, trade, which we commonly uh, uh, always call, they are better off. So one, the, our African government need to change the education from this general study stuff to technical. Because everybody that went to a technical school learned how to construct a house is better. Somebody that studied electricity at least work, work in the, sorry, work in the, <laughs> it's just that this thing is frustrating as a youth. You people will not understand. Somebody that studied electricity will go into the quarter at least in a day. A mama will call him, that come and arrange my house, he will go and arrange, they will give him that money. 
because that's what he or she studied. But us, we did grammar education. It's nobody frustrating. It's yes, nobody calls you. <laughs> yes. Okay, I did political science. At least they'll come in the quarter to come and say what is happening in Cameroon. After that, what next? So those are the situation that we find in the society, the system of education. It needs to be changed from general education back to technical education because technology helps the world. Industrialization helps the world, and that is where it belongs. Technological education. That is where our government needs to go back. We should not depend on the West. That's the first thing I say in this platform, and that is the fact. Secondly, we should have respect for the race. All of us Africans, our leaders need to learn that this, this, uh, uh, you have your children, they have studied something in the University of Boya. For instance, they'll go and study, there's a department for technology where they can even do this tall gate stuff. Eh? But the thing that they should give to the West and those children, they should not give them. And that is what is happening in Africa. Us Africans, we should learn to give privileges to Africans and not to the West for this country. We should respect the, the black race. All our brothers in Europe, America, they should come back home to empower the black race so that we can come up. That is what is important. And those are the aspects that we should be able to look into it. Because now as we are talking, this very topic that we are talking now, what most of the youth from 19 years okay fine the educational system is already there we have already gone to school and we have already studied the uh, uh, sociology anthropology and the uh, women agenda stuff we have already done it right now we cannot change it again we are asking the government to change the educational system for the benefit of the young ones that are still coming to go back to school now us that will study this stuff how do we go we, <laughs> how do we go? That's, uh, Mr. Leonard, I hope you understand me. If they change the educational system now, it will help those in primary school, they will go ahead. If those uh, our leaders privilege uh, the black race, give them the job opportunity so that they can come back, give privileges to those that have studied uh, what is related to this field, yes, we will definitely bounce up. But now, African youths of 19 to 29 are frustrated around what they study okay. and how to there are some, raise there are, there are, uh, 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 sorry there's something i'll beg dr nick here to tell you yes yes you said three things uh -huh. that one employment mm -hmm. which is not the best two self-employed self and three business. investment Invest Yes, yeah, creating investment. a business creating and then, a business, and then, yeah, yes, then for investment. investment now we are from the unit uh, university we are anthropology and whatsoever not we don't have that money for investment Self-employed, you've heard what? Draw a graph and then you have something that is called a constant. Mm -hmm. That constant is taking, for instance, Mr. 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 Robert, who is here, whether he is working or he is not working, he must spend. Am I correct? It, 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 nature does not care whether you work or you don't work. You must eat. You must live somewhere. You must travel to the studio. It costs money. That means whether you are, do, it doesn't matter what is happening. You must spend. It is that constant, that it, that must leak. Are you getting what I'm saying? But the question is. Now, what are you going to do so that, even as your lifestyle increases and your expenditure is increasing, you keep piling more money? That is the question. And it comes back to understanding what we must do to earn a lot of that money. You must, you know, you, you, you must have it. So one way or the other, whether you're going to steal it, you must have it. But the question is, how are we going to have it genuinely? And that's why it brings us back to learning the techniques of growing wealth. And you remember, on social media, I have been explaining some things. And, and, and sometimes... You have a lot of these questions boozing around in your head. Then you can capture them just in a few phrases. And, and Robert, I'm sure you learned some of those. I, 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 some of those three phrases I've been saying. Number one, that Africans don't know how to solve. No, Africans don't understand problems. That's the first thing. Number two, Africans don't know how to solve problems. And number three. Africans don't know how to create wealth. These are the three things. Now, because to understand problems, how do you understand problems? It is the, that school system that we've been talking about that helps you to understand problems. How do you create, how, how do you solve problems? You cannot solve problems if you don't have those skills and whatever. It's still the school. So the school is responsible for helping you to, to, to identify problems in the community, know them, and then know how to solve them. And interestingly, how how do you create wealth? Entrepreneurship actually is the art of identifying problems, knowing how to solve them, 
and solving them and then somebody pays you or nature pays you that's how you create wealth identify a problem solve it and somebody pays you but if you have no capacity to 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 understand problems and solve them nobody's going to pay you it's just as simple as that and before you take back the microphone for me just to just to just to finish what my brother was saying here you know if, if, those of us who are from africa you have let's go to our native fire fireside or whatever you have three stones on which you put the pot nature works like that one of the stones is ourselves the other stone is nature what nature does to us and the third stone is what others do to us so those of us as Africans, we can complain about the white man did this to us and so on. It's just one stone. Whatever the white man did, forget about it. The question is, what are you doing to yourself? You know, until you have finished. It's true that the white man, okay, he gave you a bad education. But for 60 years, did you not realize there was a bad education and you would have changed? Okay, just to show you a good example. When these our big people, when they go out to Europe there and so on, the streets are well, well, if you go to London, the streets are well, num uh, what do you say, named? Uh, yeah. And then the houses are number house number one, number two, number three, number four, and so on. And you can go anywhere that you want. But I cannot send you anywhere here in Cameroon. You, no, no, streets don't have names. The houses don't have numbers and so on. But you have minister of towns, earning a lot of money with, with directors and engineers and so on. They are unable to name streets and label houses. How do you blame the white man for that? Don't blame the white man. It's our ignorance. It's our irresponsibility. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we pray a lot in Africa. I'm sure we are the most Christian um, <laughs> continent. And uh, God exists to bless um, how do we understand that so much churches in Africa, we have so many Christians, we pray, uh, we fast, we praise, we worship and do almost everything while we pour? Is God not blessing Africans? Let me tell you, mm, blessings, I would say it's a, it's a general thing all everyone has received whether you are a poor man or you are a rich man mm. everyone is mm. blessed mm. Now, i want us to look at how the church is contributing i understand, yeah. I, mm. I understand. Mm. so i'm just saying that everyone is blessed and looking at the side of the church it's it's another it's another aspect you understand what i'm trying to say mr leo from what a, a, a doc was saying that it has to do with the individuals themselves whether they are christians who are rich a majority of Christians are poor, so you <clears throat> you come to you come to realize that, uh, Mr. Liu, that it all has to do with capacity building mm -hmm. that can lead to nation building. When you live in a society as an entrepreneur or as a businessman or as an opportunist, what you should do as a young man is that you should know the problems of the society and you find out the things that are demanding that can that you can you can seize those opportunities there are challenges in the society just like what doc was saying you should be able to identify problems and that's where that aspect of education comes in you may, you must not acquire it in school you can do self research you can teach yourself and you can you can be able to identify the problems which you have in your society and be able to become solutions whereby people will be looking for you that is you become a demand in the society where people will bring you what you want and you give them what they want and that's how societies are supposed to function and when you have that kind of mentality whether you are in europe or you are in africa as long as you are an opportunist someone who sees opportunity and someone who is an entrepreneur an entrepreneur someone who knows opportunity who sees problem and can identify the problem and can bring solution to that problem mr Liu, whether you are put where people will search for you and say this man can give us the solution to this problem and that's how you make work now you look at the aspect of the church the church has not played that role because the role of the church was to create that balance in capacity building i don't know if you understand me that divine capacity building whereby you emerge yourself away from being just a regular human being let me put it that way because it's a divine subject and it's a divine field of education so the the the, the aspect of religion was supposed to come and polish that ability but that is not the case 
what happens there is almost similar similar like what we find with many governments what do you see you find churches now are like almost organized uh, organizations whereby it congregates people drains out from the people and then the people who are top are the one drinking the milk the people who are down are the, the engines that are turning and laboring to keep those other ones up there but that was not how it was supposed to be even like we, we, we spoke about the government, Mr. Liu. In ministry or in religion, religion is meant to give to humanity. It is not meant to take from the humankind. It is to give. That means you receive from, from the divine uh, a being, and then you give now to the people who are of that religion. So, But it has been the vice versa. Same like his dog spoke about our educational system, as uh, my brother also did talk about it. In the West, it's professional education and technical education that pays. <laughs> General education doesn't pay in the West. When you are a professional or you are a technical person, you make money. You are a millionaire. And that is what, when a lot of uh, Africans even travel there, they don't understand. They just go look for regular jobs. So it all has to do with the individual as well. Coming back home here, we are taught of general education, and a lot of Cameroonians go in for general education, and that's where we have the problem. Like he cited the Igbo, the Bamileke, and the many others. Why do they succeed? They succeed because they are professionals. They have, they have technicalities. They, own, they have skills. And that is our skills that brings them that wealth. And this is what I was, I was expecting, that in most churches or in most religion, it was there to polish that ability in man. To be able to create wealth mm -hmm. but what happens there is that mr leo i think that it's almost becoming now a calamity <laughs> or a canker worm to the people because it is inside draining the, the the little that the people should have received or should have even used they are instead taking it away now for example mr leo if you look in uh, let me let me cite the case of uh, christianity if you look in christianity I tell you that the Catholic Church or the Vatican has money more than many governments you can imagine in the world. Coming right down to other organizations, coming even to the Pentecostal organization, whether it's Winner's Chapel, it's a Redeemed Church, it's Full Gospel, they are stinkingly rich. They don't own no bank, they don't own no body, they don't take credit, but they have ready cash to follow any project. They will build very good universities, big expensive schools, and all of that they achieved it in ministry. But they will tell you that it's away from ministry because it is meant to give quality education for those who are able to afford. But the people who contribute those little, little quota, small the dimes in the offerings, cannot afford those ed education. So what am I simply trying to say is that the 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 the, 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 uh, the the Christianity or religion should have been now the area that corrects the ills of the society. That means that when you come there, they impart knowledge into you. They impart wisdom into you. They impart understanding into you so that when you go out, you are able to use those skills mm. and put in the society where it can become a service to humanity. But what happens is that they drain you and you become a sheep. A sheep means you don't have, you only follow their directive. You don't have a brain anymore. On your own. Okay, let me take a few uh, messages. I'm not sure uh, the chronic buys that he he will, he will react to that. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. The problem is that most Africans don't want to grow into anything they are doing, but they prefer to go into a grow. Means you must work with a mentor, and you must first of all know their consumers. Kimbong, no, Kimbeng is writing from uh, Ngienbo. Good evening to you, Kimbeng. Writing from uh, Esti Munas Village. Good evening to you all in the studio. Please, uh, the moderator, uh, um, stop placing our most learned Dr. Nick with the other panelists because uh, they are instead helping to confuse us. <laughs> Judge is writing from Bomenda. Everybody merits to be here, please. Uh, please, can you, oh, say, can you unblock me on Facebook? I did not block you, please. <laughs> I did not block you. I don't know whoever blocked you there. I don't know. I did. 
Uh, this one says, uh, good evening, sir. Just to thank you on this topic of the day, I wish just to add a little on what our brother said. Cameroon started technology before China, but today China is 100% better to Cameroon. So what I would like to add is we should change most of our universities to professional schools. That is just what China did to become who they are today. Secondly, we have some academic leaders that are so discouraging. For example, a student develops something and a lecturer ends up saying things like, this project is above your capacity, which practically discourages uh, the students. Okay. We hope our lecturers will not do that. Hello, Mr. Liu. The French will fully destroy all good technical commercial schools in English, Cameroon, and replaced it uh, with their technical and commercial education that is just like general education. Now students with cap doing building construction cannot build a straight wall in Giando from Mancon in Bamenda. That's what you okay. can do. Good. good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Simon, writing from Econa. I enjoy your program so much. I'm actually learning from it, especially when I heard uh, Dr. Nick talk. May I please have his number? Ask for Dr. Nick's number after the program. David Monono, writing from United Arab Emirates, says, Good evening. In the Africans, black contribute huge sums of money to build churches that sell anointing oils for a very huge sum of money to the population, while the white man contributes money to build research centers that produce our basic necessities and vaccine. Hey, Mr. Liu, I love your nice and educative everyone there is talking well i how i wish our leaders could think like them i'm christian writing from tatum hi prime r danny is writing from the united arab emirates greetings to all the panelists why are africans uh, poor is because their brain is damaged by their colonial masters brought they brought in religion to Africans instead of industrialization, destroyed factories to build churches, brought bosses to Africans as leaders with big titles instead of leaders to serve their people. They sell what they have invented like cars, mobile phone instead of teaching us how to invent. Okay, um, good evening to you. Hi, Mr. Leonard. Please stop blaming the government for everything. Development come mostly from private from the private sector i am john writing from tico okay john thank you for your contribution good evening mr leo please this goes to the panelists saying when you go to the west you remain what is the government of cameroon doing to invest to investors in this country if not killing it with taxes the entrepreneur that are trying to make their businesses survive is the government encouraging them you say no to that, okay? Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. And to all the panelists, I don't think Christianity in itself is responsible for the underdevelopment of Africa. Your panelists are comparing Africa to 80 years old to those in China who have been given enabling environments by their government, but we don't really have such by our governments. A great majority of churches nowadays are having empowerment seminars from time to time so as to release good Christian citizens uh, into the society. Britain is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Good evening to you. Uh, Britain, good evening, Mr. Leo. Please, for you. Please. Okay. Um, you see, I should send... The number you can only get any number please after the program black people are people are people are poor because they lack capacity to invest in ideas bulam conrad writing from uh Bamenda. <clears throat> now this this view i think i wanted you to react before i come to you yes Yes, but they say uh, Christianity should not be blamed. Uh, the church has nothing That's to do right. with it. That's right. That's uh, right. I would like to take some time now to explain what we call religion, what we call Christianity, what we call business or productivity. Because we've been mixing up a lot of facts, not knowing which is which. Mm. And usually the Antichrist takes advantage of this to confuse people, to think that because China is getting a lot of money or whatever, 
and, and rejecting God, they are doing well. No, they are not doing well. You know, and what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his life? It's just because there's some confusion. And just give me a few minutes. Let me polish that. When you take a human being like me sitting here or like Robert over there, Robert, Robert is made up of three parts, two parts or three parts as you wish. <clears throat> Robert has a body and that body communicates with the environment through the five senses. Okay, And then Robert has got a soul inside that you and I don't see. That soul, that soul does th those three things. Soul, the soul is the, his willpower, his, uh, his, his willpower, his mind and his, um, his emotions that constitutes the, the soul. And then uh, um, Robert is controlled by a spirit, one spirit or the other. Either you're controlled by the spirit of the devil or you're by, controlled by the spirit of God. I mean, there is no neutral position. Either you're warm or you're cold. Now that said, you need to know how to make use of all these forces in you. But most of us are not aware of them. When we are talking of, when Christ brings his Christianity or, or, or whatever, he is bringing you into the presence of the Holy One. He wants the Holy Spirit to lead your life. Forget about the white man. I don't know whether we have black, black religion or what. If we have a Holy Spirit in that black religion that is leading us, fair and good. But we are saying that you are controlled by two spirits, either the spirit of the devil or the spirit of the good one. But the unfortunate thing is that while you have a lot of churches and pastors and so on trying to preach Christianity or God to people, there are a lot of famine in there. There are a lot of famine who are now using uh, the 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 knowledge about God and all these things, whether they got it right or wrong, and are, are not duping the people. Just because you have a couple of people duping people in the name of religion doesn't mean that God doesn't exist. Now, the adage says that you should pray as if everything depends on prayer, and then you should also work as if everything depends on work. Now, when you when you look at Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul was one of the greatest preachers, but he worked for his his, his bread. But if you're going and you stay in a, and, and 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 then you are somewhere, and then you 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 you're giving tithes because you want God to give you back something. If you if you are if, if you are expecting miracles, forget it. If you this thing about free 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 things, uh, give one and take two miracles back. Now that thing is bullshit. Now that is the problem. That mindset. Once you go to pray to God, please please, I'm begging all of you, don't go to God because you want things from God. If that is the motive for going to God, then don't even bother going to church. Go to God because you want to praise Him. You want to worship him and you want to honor him as your father and your God. Finish. But this is what God does for you. When you subject yourself to the spirit of God and you want to work, God is going to, you know, I was talking about the spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do for you? It does three things. It is the spirit of communion. That's the first thing. It's the, it, it's the spirit of intuition. That is the second thing. And it's the spirit of conscience. Now, when it gives you intuition, then your creative abilities become very fine-tuned. And you can see a lot of opportunities where other people don't see. And you are very creative. And you can create a lot of wealth because the spirit leads you. In fact, when you are working with the spirit of God, what it would take an ordinary man in the world, 10 years or 20 years to get, you do it in three years because God shows you the resources and shows you what you should do and you just do that and you get it. So if you are going to pray thinking that God is going to bring food to your door, it's a lie. But God gives you the, the mindset and the intuition to, to, to know what to do. And this is the beauty about it. When God gives you things and blesses you, it's not just for you. It's so that you can share with other people. You know, talk to other people, help other people, give others bread and so on. So it's about, it's about that. It's about giving. And the more you give, the more you receive. So it's a whole package. And we cannot talk about it now. It's a subject of another day. I just wanted to clear this thing. Okay. Uh, the black man is poor due to the following reasons. Laziness, lack of principles, illiteracy, enslaving policies, focusing more or theoretical education than practical education, lack of artificial intelligence. Dina Bell from Tico, special greetings to Dr. Nick. Good evening to you, uh, Dina Bell. Um, this one says, it's very hard for a child to make it in life if he is ignored by the parents. The Cameroon government doesn't care about Cameroonians' birth. Their own interest, Cameroonians have the capacity, but CPDM has taken everything that can promote that capacity. Gerard, writing from Long Street in uh, uh, Boya, this one says, um, a country has a poor tax system that kills emerging businesses. Funga B, writing from uh, Bamenda, uh, greetings to you all in the studio. 
Um, I am enjoying your program and to say that uh, the blacks don't have confidence in what they do. They instead depend on what the whites do. Uh, they don't have faith in, their, in themselves. Matthias writing from uh, Limbe. Good evening. The African educational system is poor. Okay. Uh, in Africa, in Africa, they only teach people how to use the goods produced by the whites and not how to produce them. Each Africans know how to buy calculator uh, produced by whites to look for an unknown number X and Y. Okay. Maxine is writing from Batoke. Um, greetings, Mr. Liu and Panelists. Prayers without action cannot give you wealth. Achu writing from Mutengene. Now, uh, you are a young person, and we heard the President of the Republic some, day, some years back call on youth to engage in agriculture. And uh, today, Dr. Nick is talking about engaging in entrepreneurship, investments. All of this will require uh, capital. But the banking system in Cameroon and Africa, does it actually uh, provide those opportunities for young people to have the required capital to engage in or to venture into uh, businesses, especially to be the type of um, successful business person that Dr. Nick is talking about. Okay, uh, before I answer your question, when I was invited, I knew we are talking about the black man race, which has to do with Africa, Latin America, and everything. Yeah. And I struggle to stay on it to talk about the black man race, not to be political, but apolitical. But now you brought now. Uh, no, I'm talking about the, bank, the banking policy is <laughs> only in Cameroon. It cuts right, across, okay, yes. Okay, because when you said the head of state, I thought. Because even I'm, I'm making reference. <laughs> All right. I'm sure okay. the heads of, head of state of other nations have also called All on right. young people to engage. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the case of uh, Cameroon is different because uh, the head of state of Cameroon, as you say, head of state, have taken to cognizant the fact that uh, entrepreneurship, you need to have the knowledge and you need to have the capital. But you see, most of, uh, with regards to agriculture, the head of state knows the lands are already there. Mm -hmm. The lands are already there. The highest thing you may need are the seeds to plant to wheat, the soil are fertile. Like somebody that goes into agriculture, you are walking in, for instance, around the faco, this guy into tomato. You realize that all you need to do is, the farm is there, you get a seed. That one would really not be a problem to get a seed. Plant the tomatoes, maybe you could need money to spray them and the rest. So you realize that with agriculture, it is much more easier because most of us Cameroonians, we grew up into that agricultural uh, uh, system, even though it might be subsistent in our villages where all of us we grew, uh, grew up. So at this level, agriculture is much more favorable. Uh, like for instance, we still talk in Cameroon, most of the rich people we have in Cameroon are there in agriculture. Even the president, many people don't know in Cameroon. They just see President Paul Bia. No, my question, my question to you is, all of those facilities here that we are seeing are available. Yes, How yes. easy is it for a young a, a, a young person like yourself to acquire say 10 hectares of land in Cameroon and then uh, go to the bank to get uh, a required capital because what you're talking about is subsistence uh, farming but if you have to get into ventures that will empower you uh, so that you can get rich you need capital yes 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 we are talking about a situation that one we will talk about uh, I really don't want to go political. We we'll talk about owning land, for instance, in most African countries. The African countries that laws don't even permit someone of less than 30 years to even own land. Eh? But I will not want us to go into that. Let's look at it at the basic level. Mm -hmm. The land, yes. Because the main problem we have is people are in town thinking about leaving town to go back to the village is always the problem that they will see you in the village as a failure. Because if, if for instance, I'm a backward man here in Douala, and I see that it's not going, I go back to the land there. They do have a corn in the backward land two times per year, when in Baminda it's just one time. So you go back, you invest in agriculture, the lands are there. You start with subsistence. You do go with the subsistence. From the subsistence, you generate money to make the subsistence to become uh, industrial and large. You start from something to go to something. Then you, should, then so you have no reason to complain. About 
No, you said it was difficult for you to succeed. You, why we, not just we, put we, what you're we, saying? We, you we are talking about a sector of agriculture. That's why I said to make it in town is difficult as compared to going back to the village. That's what I said. <laughs> when we are analyzing, we look at things in different perspectives. Mm -hmm. At the level of town, yes, somebody that is young educated in town will have uh, different difficulties like somebody back in the village. So those two things are there. So if I'm analyzing, I should talk about it in these two perspectives. I will not only stick on one okay. perspective. Going back to the village, yes, in the villages, there are more land. How is it easy to get a land here in Douala or in Yaoundé? But in the village, you have land, you have space to go into uh, 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 rearing some birds to, to, to let them grow fowls and the rest. In the village, it's more easier as compared to town and city. That's what I'm saying, that with agriculture, for instance, if I take back my back and I go back to Ndop, for instance, getting a land there, yes, normally the families there will get a land, the maces in the house too easy to walk, plant them will be easier for me as compared to getting a capital of 150,000 in town and look for a business or to start while paying the bills this. In the villages, those bills okay. are not there as compared to town. So these two aspects are different. But to be honest, I say it, agriculture is the best as compared to any other aspect. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Liu. This is Evangelist Vicky from Bamenda. Blacks are not wealthy because of their minds. Africans need to renew uh, their minds, okay, like Bomali said. Greetings, sir, and to everyone in the studio. I'm Vicky from Kumba. Just to add uh, to what Dr. Nick said, blacks should uh, be creative and stop being lazy in church or running after prophecies. God help uh, those who help themselves. Mm, I'm still looking for that verse here. <laughs> I've not seen it. <clears throat> Uh, greetings, sir, and to everyone in the studio. Um, okay, uh, Vicky, I got uh, this message already. Uh, good evening to all. It's divine from Douala. Those who brought Christianity in Africa don't pray up to half of what we do. Africans are lazy and depend a lot on favors uh, for what they don't deserve and call it blessings. We need money to start up, Dr. Nick. Just forget the issue of mindset. Nobody grows up uh, and likes to be poor. Thanks to all. Uh, the panelists. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo, and uh, to all the panelists in the studio. Hmm. Robert has left me agape with his viewpoint this evening. Something is seriously wrong somewhere. Raymond is writing from the United Arab Emirates. Good evening, sir. We are very poor because our universities teach us uh, to write concours instead of being entrepreneurs. And base Christian is writing from. Uh, Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Any well-organized economic system must encourage the private sector. Cameroon has completely ignored uh, this uh, sector. This one says, man in itself is a spirit being. The problem with black man is just about me, me, me. If it's not me, then it's nobody. We Africans are our own problem. We hate everything good and our own self. Oliver is writing from where we don't know. Good evening, Mr. Liu and all the panelists. Thank you all and special thanks to Dr. Nick. Blacks are poor because of their mentality. They believe that they can only make it in the white man's country. Daisy writing from Kumba. Good evening to you, Daisy. Hello, good evening, Mr. Kum. This is Odilia from Tiko. I love everyone in the studio uh, today. They're doing great. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Most of our leaders are formatted by the West in a bid to perpetuate our under underdevelopment. Ako Ferdi is writing from uh, Boya. Uh, good evening, Pastor. You have said it all. Derek is writing from Kumba. I don't know whether there's a pastor here. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love the topic so much. I am very happy with the contributions of the panelists. This topic was well elaborated by Chika Onyeni in his book, the capitalist nigger. I think if this book was made popular in Africa, then every African would know why we haven't been able to detach ourselves from the West. It's Maxwell writing from March 16. Dr. Nick, <clears throat> I want us to look at the possibilities uh, for most of those who want to engage in entrepreneurship to have uh, capital from our banking system. Does it favor the easy obtention of loans? Thank you very much. Um, listen, when there is money in the bank, 
That money does not belong to the banker. That money has come from the community. People have brought money from the community and put it in the bank. And the banker is looking after the money. It does not belong to the banker. And it's not a gift. You cannot just go there and the banker will just take the money and give you to walk away because he loves you. No, it doesn't work like that. And the government is not going to pressurize any bank to give you money. After all, if you look in our country, the government has come up with something called PRC and something where they give money to some youths to try to start up some things. And that system has not been working well. First, because the, the, even the money that is put there, you know, the, the people looking after it are very corrupt. That's the first thing. But even then, the few people who take the loans are probably not even the people who really need the money. They're the children of big people or highly connected people who still suck the money away. Then a few people get the money because, remember, I said that a lot of people win at the national lottery and don't get anything out of it. So somebody can still go to the bank or to that piazza or whatever and take some money to invest in the business and does with something else with it. You go drink or you go take out your girlfriend and eat and you buy yourself a big car or something like that. We, we misuse resources. We don't know how to manage money because we lack the capacity. It's very, very important watch my lips again get one thing first is the capacity and then you as an individual you must know exactly what you want you must understand your passions and then have a vision about what you want and begin to walk to, to walk and work on it if you don't if you just if money just falls on you it's not going to help you and nature doesn't like lazy people nature is going to kick you around and when you show proof of self-discipline, that you are disciplined enough to succeed, you're going to fail once, you're going to fail twice, you're going to fail three times, but, but sooner or later you'll get up. I'm talking to you. Let me just say, I borrowed 250 million francs from the National Financial Credit in 2008. I just finished paying that money probably two years ago. And I went to China. I had this great business thing in my mind to buy medical equipment and, and shove it around and, you know, whatever. But when I brought it, people, the, the, the mindset of most people was not technologically uh, at that level. So they didn't buy into the technology and they continued to do things the analog way. And, you know, the interest rates and everything, they kept, the thing kept spinning in and almost drowned me. But, so, when you are going into a business, failure is going to be part of it. Why do you, why, when, I, when I talked about that book, why, C's, why A students work for C students and B students work for the government? There's something about C students that A students don't have. C students are those students who at A level might have something like seven to, seven to nine points thereabouts. B students will be those that have, let's say, 10 to about 14 points. And A students, you might be looking at people with 15 to 25 points at the A level. A students, sharp. But this is a characteristic of sharp students. They go to these, our grammar schools that we've been condemning. They cram the physics and everything. They're good at mathematics, ba -ba 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 -ba, and recite it and get the A, the, A, the A grades. The C student is one of those who tries to understand how things work and so on, and will be failing. And like Christ, he will fail the second time. He will fail the, th the, 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 the first time, the second time, the third time. He fails but rises up, fails but rises up. And we, we laugh at them. But this is the beauty about it. There is something in the character and the mindset of those children who are failing. Though they are failing, they, they develop this resistance, this capacity to rise up and try again. And that is what entrepreneurship is all about. You must have the capacity to fall and rise again. It doesn't matter what the pain is like. But those A, A students, you know, someone is good in his physics. He doesn't want to, 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 to read economics because when he goes to economics, he doesn't understand his teaches to physics and he becomes a professor of physics or whatever. And he fails, he's, he hates failure. You would have seen that some students who have been very bright in school, those, they, they always take, let's say, they're the first in class. The, the day he is the second in class, he commits suicide. That is not the mindset of people who succeed. So the mindset is very, very, very important. And we have to guide our children to, 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 to have the right mindset. <coughs> and failure is, failure is a good thing. It does something to your character. It corrects you. But while, while we are advocating to the right mindset, we must change our educational system. The white man deceived us with these grammar schools, and we've been running through those grammar schools and falling in the ditch. We must change. 70% of our universities and why we must change them to polytechnics, we will change them.
Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Kuma. I like your program. May God bless you. I'm Tim Timbu Luis, writing from uh, from being with good evening to you, Luis. Hi, good evening uh, to you people in the studio. Christianity is a good thing. For me, I would like the government to put religion in schools like first subject. It builds children in a good life. It's Christianity that developed Africa, like my village in so Kumbu. If not for Christianity, that brings education there. Who, there, who else? <clears throat> Thanks, you people. I love your program so much. Thank you. To uh, hello, Mr. Liu and able panelists. Uh, we Africans are so selfish, wicked, and short-sighted. We have a general character of all for me and nothing for the rest. Uh, that's why one person will stay in power for decades, and people in positions concentrate on how to amount wealth to themselves. Pius is writing from Douala. Uh, good evening. Uh, what Africans need is a complete change of mentality. Our youths are busy developing techniques to dip people of their hard-earned monies. Meanwhile, they could use such techniques to create jobs for themselves. Britain is uh, writing from Yaoundé. Good evening to you all in the studio. To me, the reason why blacks are not wealthy is because most Africans do not believe in themselves. That's why we keep importing goods uh, from the white man. I was shocked when I heard that in Cameroon we import toothpick. Valentine is writing from Bermuda. Good evening to you, Valentine. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and Defoe Richard says, uh, When I listen to the so-called intellectuals, my heart bleeds. Are we independent? Do we determine our educational system or priorities? The stooges put in power ensure uh, mediocrity. This one says, hope this program will be will be my home. Good evening to you all. I believe the program is coming from we the blacks, okay? We are lack of knowledge. I myself, I come from a poor background. That was, there was no way out, uh, so I decided to search for a job in the forest. Okay, um, <laughs> we are actually out of time. Uh, yes, but we are out of time we cannot uh, fully discuss the second topic i really it is very important i want us to to, to discuss it but uh, we may have to look at it again on uh, on friday in detail i just want us to say a word on the second topic uh, uh, lecturers say they want to go on strike over uh, bonuses or allowances for research we talk very briefly on it i'll start with you um most uh, the lecturers asked for the allowances before they are paid, research allowances. Uh, that is the problem we have about uh, intellectual. I respect them a lot, but uh, research allowances is different from their salaries as lecturers. So mm -hmm. these two aspects are supposed to be separated. And uh, the Minister of uh, Higher Education, of course, or Professor Jacques Van Dongo, who is an intellectual in the higher level, who, who works together with the head of state, President Pobia, has always had these uh, universities close, uh, the state university close to, to their hearts. And that's why you see budgets give, allocated to the universities are very, very high to uh, ensure that uh, everything goes on smoothly. But we still go to this... Um, our lecturers, uh, doctors, and professors that want to strike because uh, they want money from the state. It now makes those that are having advanced level, those that are having the first degree, to start to ask questions because they are the ones that are supposed to teach the young ones to be creative and not to depend on the state. But they themselves that are doctors and professors are the highest people that depend on the state and make the young one grow up to know that they cannot survive without the state. And they are still the ones that will come to talk. So I just want uh, uh, these lecturers to understand that this money has always been given to them. If there is a delay, and there is a reason for everything. A strike is not the best solution because when they are striking like that, their own image in the other countries in the world, they are seeing it. As yeah, it's, 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 is it not the government that instituted, instituted uh, the policy of providing these grants um, for research for the lecturers? If the government says, I'm going to be giving you research grants, what, why should they not uh, ask for it now? No, it is the decision of the government to give. 
Yeah, but, but there, the and there is a decision for that same government to stop. It is not anywhere yeah, in the constitution. That decision has, that decision it is has not yet in the taken. constitution. That's why I go back to say that there is a delay, mm -hmm. and they, as lecturer and intellectual, they should understand that the government knows and is aware of it. Mm. Strike is not the solution. We have many things now that we are handling in this country. And what I want to say is that they have the best minister in higher education, Jacques Fam Dongo, who have their concern in heart. So what they are doing is not the right uh, situation. They should move to the ministry, right, and discuss with the minister. And the minister will discuss with the head of state, the father of the nation, that has always been there to care for the people to bring out solution. Why all these strikes, strikes, strike all over? We have important things to do. So please, they should and listen to the head of state and the minister mm -hmm. so that lasting solution can be brought to this issue and not the issue of strike. They are intellectuals, the young ones are looking up to them. They should stop this issue of strike, strike violence all the time. They have a way they can write their letters to the minister and he will discuss with the head of state and there will be a lasting solution. Yeah, Andrew Atemi Baku, um, do you think that uh, the lecturers in Cameroon are underestimated, under, not well treated? Because almost every time they need to tell, remind government that we need money to engage in research. Well, Mr. Liu, well, I, I think that uh, if, they, if they have a complaint, the, the, the government is supposed to call them and see how it can, it can try to, I mean, create a solution to solve that, uh, that problem instead of uh, maybe giving them the room to, to, to strike. And those lecturers who probably were getting some extra pay for, from the government for, for doing research, at the end of the day, Mr. Liu, for all the years we have been having lecturers doing research. All lecturers, they're supposed to, they, they receive uh, research yeah, grants, yeah. It, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, because at the end of the day, we want to see the, uh, the, the output of what they have been they have been for all these years. I mean, the people, yeah, they, not only the research they have been carrying out, but we want to see the quality of uh, students, the quality of people that they have been able to create in Cameroon, because that is how you can also determine on how, I mean, the, 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 uh, the chances of us emerging, because it has to take the quality of the, the, educa the, 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 the education in the, in the citizens of this country to, to, to promote the country as well. Now, let me just cite some very few examples. Like I was still talking on the job issue, for example. These students come out. What are their chances if they don't go back to the government? Assuming the government wasn't there. Mm -hmm. In the private sectors, what are the chances that do they stand? You look at this uh, road here in Bonaberry that, has, that was repaired some few, uh, two or three years ago. The road always has a problem. This road was given to Satom for repairs. The question is, what are, where are our own engineers that went to school? I mean, what are their opportunities? If you go to the West, you won't find Europe or EU, France, or United Kingdom or America giving contracts to, to firms that, that, that come from Africa. They won't. They will let their own engineers do that, same as China. So what do we do with our own products that have come out of uh, 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 those research, those uh, those field of research, what happens with them? So you come to realize that, Mr. Liu, the, the the setup of the government for me is just like, like I like I, I keep saying, is is just to open an unlimited access to to resources because th there's just no need for lecturers to get up and they are wanting to go on strike because they are not being they given some money for, for for research and all of that. Because at the end of the day, Mr. Liu, it's a uh, you see, we still come back to having this problem that we have today in Cameroon. Whether it is what the lecturers are complaining and the previous topic of the blacks not uh, having to, to, I mean, come out of a certain level of, of, uh, of, of, of uh, income, income uh, margin, it comes back to the point where we need to have very strong growth percentage of jobs that is being created. I still insist on that because a society that is made up of intellectuals, people who solve problems, Mr. Liu, take in somebody from the village who knows nothing and put him in that society within 
a short period of time, the person begins to pick up. That influence in the society. So I want to see what these lecturers, whether in Bamenda, whether where, what influence they have been able to create that can that we can say that no Cameroonians are going somewhere. We are ready for the challenges that we are facing or that will face us tomorrow. So at the end of the day, like he said, we just have so many troubles in this country. Education, it has proven that it's not helping Cameroonians. A lot of people went to school. What today is putting bread on their table is not what they learn in school. So the, the, the essence of them spending all the years in school, all the money that was spent in school is not what is putting food on their table. So we should be able to go in for what is going to we what you are going to sow is what you are going to reap. Okay. What you are going to put in is what you're going to get. On Friday, on Friday, we are going to essentially discuss this topic, looking at uh, the lecturers uh, of, of, of our state universities, private and public, and also look at where Cameroon is. What has been the contribution of uh, our lecturers? Uh, to what Cameroon is, and if these lecturers can actually prepare Cameroon for 2035. But uh, with this, uh, you, are, yeah. you are an educationist now. Yeah. I, want, I, I want us to understand what this research grant is all about and how it has helped in, uh, in, in our lecturers engaging in fruitful researches. You see, when we started with the topic, why are we poor in Africa, we all agreed that education was poor. And all these professors and so on, they are part of it. Mm -hmm. okay? And for 60 years, they were unable to tell the government that the education was poor and we should change it. Why is it so? Because they also just studied these subjects and so on that have nothing to do with wealth creation. And therefore, they are doing their research in things that are not useful. Are you getting what I'm saying? They are doing research in things that are not useful. That's why the research and development that they do does not impact the community. So, um, you know, um, there are always two sides to a coin. Okay, every knife has got two edges. And I think the fact that they have come up with the idea that they want to strike is a very good thing and a very bad thing too. A very good thing in the sense that it gives the government the opportunity to say, hey, guys, for once, let me try to see what you've been doing. <laughs> then we can continue. It's, it's a time for, 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 for stock taking, so to speak. And I would say that the government should not give them any penny. They should, but no, no, government should not give them any penny because it's, it's, it's waste of resources. We have, to re, we have to redo the whole educational system because the money we are, we are putting in the secondary education and higher education now, I would say that four-fifths of it is, is a waste. It's really a waste. It's not helping. We need to recraft all of that thing so that it's useful. And let's put it this way. We have to, if you go into our, our school systems now, you will see that from secondary school, about 80% of the students are studying the art subjects and just about 20 studying the sciences. We have to reverse that in a way that 80% of the children are studying science, science, engineering, and technology, and not only about 20 studying the arts. That's the first thing we have to do. Once we do that, then, you know, like I've always, we've always said, go to places like South Korea, Malaysia, uh, Singapore, Finland, and get their curriculum and set up our, our, our curriculum so that we can do what they are doing and be able to produce what they are producing. Now that said, you will see that most of our teachers will not have the capacity to teach. So we are going to take teacher, take take real professors from places like India, from those <laughs> places. They will come and evaluate all our professors and those that make it. We give them the grants, give them everything, let them be doing what we expect. Are you saying? And then saying, the rest saying, of them, we send them to the rice fields to grow rice. Are you saying that um, these uh, research allowances have not been put into a good use all these years? To research, research about what to do, what with it. It's no, not but, needed. But, but, but the lecturers need to upgrade. Um, what have they been upgrading so far? That's the, what. That's what those Indian professors have to come and find out what what they have been upgrade. Uh, on to upgrade what? And and by the way, if they really want to strike, if you want to strike, I would advise you the best strike to do is just take your bag, go to your house, and stay in your house with your wife. Don't come on the street because you know our police. They will beat you up and they will lock you up. Okay. <laughs> but nobody, 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 nobody said uh, they were. They Don't were, come uh, to the streets Please, Don't on Friday, Doctor Nick Nguanyam, I want to use this opportunity to say I will need you on Friday if it's possible because I want us to 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 get back to this this topic. Yes. If 
it's possible for me to get some of the lecturers to be here on Friday so that we revisit um, this topic. Let let us understand. No, no, no. I don't want to, to, us to go political. You are, you want to talk <laughs> politics? Here. No, no, no. No. Um, we have to end here. Thank you, Dr. Nick, for coming. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Uh, we, I mean, sometimes we are passionate, but it's just a strong way of passing a message because mm -hmm. we've been messing up in this country too much. We are taking the rendezvous for Friday. I'll be there. Okay. Thank you for coming. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Liu. <laughs> no, it's true. We have, we have to look at the inputs and the outputs. Okay. You can judge the output from the input. Make, uh, two minutes. Make, no, that's make. just what I'm just trying to say. That okay. What the lecturers are complaining, Mr. Liu, it, see, it sounds as if it's an educational issue, but it's a political issue. This is just all game. That money is just a waste. Because you look at the, the you look at the inputs and you look at the output, you realize there's no connection. Mm -hmm. What are they putting out? That's what is important. Mm -hmm. What do we get in our society? You see what I'm trying to say? So at the end of the day, we should be able to create what is going to work for us. We should be able to create what is going to solve our problem. We should be able to create what is going to excel us. We should not promote what does not excel us. This idea of giving lecturers grants for, for research, the question is for how many years, Mr. Leo, when I turn and look around, there's nothing we are doing. Absolutely nothing we are doing. So okay. that's just my point. We have many yeah. people, degree holders, riding Okadas on the street when we have lecturers and we have researchers. What are they researching on? Okay. Uh, Kedia, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity to say happy birthday to Honorable Ngala Jira that is celebrating his birthday. <laughs> Wherever he is, uh, happy birthday to you. And also I would like to thank God for giving long life to the head of state, President Pobia, to be guiding us in Cameroon towards our emergency. He's a blessing to Cameroon. I will keep on, I will take this opportunity to say thank you, God, for giving him long life. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 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 he has two things to make. <laughs>